Hey everybody, it's Brian from Team Aquascapes. Thanks so much for joining us. This is gonna be a fun episode. Excited. <laughs> I am, but I'm a little worried because there's two days left. You remember? Two days. We only have two days left and nothing is finished. I mean, nothing. We've started everything, but nothing is finished. We still have to finish the Babbly Brook bird loving stream, get the basalt columns in. I still have to then finish off the patio work's got to get like done and all the like detail stuff around the patio. We've got to finish off the big slate wall pond thing that I'm calling it with a waterfall. And then there's landscaping and then there's pathways and then there's lighting. And there's mulch in two days. Here we go. <laughs> so close to the original design but in this area here where I had drawn out this herb right here we didn't have this one definitely had these but I did not picture water coming over them but because we're out here and so much of what we do is R&D research and development I think what I want to do is actually go ahead add the toppers to these and get these to actually spill water over the top it's gonna to be so much better looking and if I don't like it I can always turn the pump off but to come back later and do it would be such a pain in the butt In the way this is turning out so far. We're getting down to our last few walls. The height of this will have to get altered a little bit. I think what we're gonna do is try to find a topper or shave one of these guys down to get us just like two inches below water level. So the wetland that sits right behind it just kind of pushes across the surface. I really don't wanna leave a spot where a heron can come in and grab all the fish, which was the idea of just taking everything straight down three feet or more. So we'll try to keep the fish safe down in the deep area here, making this really a true Koi Pond. The other challenge we're coming up with was how do we finish these pieces? Do I take this curve and roll it this way? Do I curve it this way and then come back? So we're just gonna kind of play around with it. I'll let you know what we come up with. I think we'll go this way, then this way, and then maybe a boulder, because there's no way they're gonna match up just right. The suspense has gotta be killing you. Me too, here we go. Finish Jack's stream. I love Jack's stream. I'm so glad he pushed us to like get this done. It looks incredible. It's even gonna look better when we totally finish with the mulch and the plants. We got some Japanese maples and stuff, but this is my favorite type of look. This Pennsylvania field stone kind of flat rocks. Everything just kind of comes in. That water really twists and turns all over the place. After we finished Jack's stream, then we went over here. Come check this out. So this was always in the design to do these big, tall stack slate walls back over here. I really wanted those just really to create privacy. When you're standing here, I didn't want you to see the patio that was beyond it. More importantly, on that patio, on the other side of those walls, I didn't want you to see stuff over here. And those of you guys that follow the channel know how much, like when I talk about design, I want to create mystery. And so that creates a lot of mystery. What will look awesome though, is when the evergreens come in front of those walls, just soften them up from this side. And then in months, weeks, I don't know, whenever we get around to it, we're actually gonna plumb those things. And from the other side, it'll be this big weepy wall, which will just look incredible. Now that that's done, we're gonna come in here. We gotta grade all this out. I talked to my good friend over at Wasco Nursery, Matt Zerby. He's been our go-to guy for plants for so many years. He came out here. We kind of bounced some ideas off of each other. And tomorrow evening, I think we'll start planting this thing up. Right now, we're currently working on this section. 
we had to finish this in order for us to come over here and do this because if I dug in this big pondless reservoir over here I would never be able to get over here and do this so now that that's done we came in here we've got 12 large aqua block and we're gonna do the most epic totally amazing fountain rock display that hey, you guys have ever seen I'm carrying two basalt columns <laughs> isn't that crazy these are the new faux basalt columns they're not exactly light because I'm like super strong and everything but they are lighter than the real ones so we're gonna mix a bunch of these artificial basalt columns with real basalt columns and I challenge you guys to try to pick out which ones are the artificial ones and which ones are the real ones is about 70 no 80 no maybe even like 85 88 percent finished 88 <laughs> percent finished the pond is done the walls are done and plumbed we do need to get some pumps installed and if you can see back this way i'll shout so you guys don't have to come too close but back over here we've got a big waterfall that's going to come down so we can't finish this i can't get my biofalls and my plumbing and all that stuff set in here yet because if i did i wouldn't have access to get to my fountain rock so it is definitely a chess game back here lots of moving parts get this done move this piece before that piece can move make sure we don't kill our access so on and so on and so on and all of this is being done because friday if you remember we have a big vip event saturday and sunday the whole place is open to the public for our giant spring sale it's a once a year opportunity for people to come in get discounts on plants get discounts on fish come see us we're all here together you'll have greg the pond guy ed the pond possessor myself chris jack the whole aquascape team here and it's just a lot of work but if we didn't have the stress of spring sale and kind of that deadline there's no way we would even do this kind of stuff so without spring sale we don't get motivated to do new things back here so thank you people that attend spring sale and thank you guys so much for watching and everybody else that's helping with spring sale Thursday things are happening like you can see part of it's running and it looks so cool and I've got so much more to say about those stack slate walls I don't know when I'm gonna talk about it but I'm gonna talk about it at some point but Billy's getting some plumbing finished over there we got the stack slate walls going we even have one of our jets down here running we love using this lock line for this reason you hardly see any movement now but I can bend this effortlessly get that walking this way I can put a Y on it I can push it more that way so we've got something that'll keep a big old hole open in the winter which is really nice and then most importantly it's circulating the water in what would be a pretty dead area of this pond so that's just great i got my good friend tony bonk from a list construction is that right yes sir it's quality carpentry a list <laughs> a list just remember that pulled in a big favor he came out here i really wanted to create more privacy right here he handmade these little lattice areas it just is a nice backdrop rather than looking through this way we're gonna get a bunch of flowering hydrangeas back there which will look good and then come check this out We said it was gonna be an epic fountain rock display. Now I know I talked about like 18 or maybe 100 fountain rocks or something, but as we started setting boulders in, it definitely got scaled down, but it's all about aesthetic. So rather than forcing in 18 of them, we did 11. So check this out. This is an, an awesome grand entrance. If you can remember the old display, there used to be a really cool little waterfall here with some burning bushes and stuff in the back. I loved it because it was dramatic. It added some appearance, but we also wanted to show off our new fountain rock. And I think when this thing's running, it's gonna be a showstopper, especially with the fire ones on the side over here. So that's right. These actually have water and fire coming out of them. These are the artificial ones. These are the real ones. Obviously I can't have fire come out of the fake ones, but this is gonna look great. And then we're gonna get a really cool evergreen backdrop. Things are happening, but not fast enough because I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow and we need it tomorrow to finish. So guys, I gotta go, bye. <laughs> We'll be right back. 
We're finished. Like with so much time to spare. Not really. Like not really actually at all. I don't even know why I'm saying that because I think in 30 seconds, I actually think now there's customers here waiting for the VIP event. But you guys come in really quick. I'm gonna give you the tour, show you what they're gonna see in just a couple minutes here. So come on in. a ton of work it was actually so much work but we scheduled it like a job and it was fun and this place needed a makeover it was just getting tired the landscape was getting tired the features were old and outdated and it was time to make a huge change I'm super excited about it I love it I can't wait to see what your guys reaction is on this but even the entrance and the new basalt columns those faux basalt columns they look as real as any basalt column I've ever seen ever they look so good and at night they look magical all lit up I love the backdrop too one of my favorite plants of all all time are weeping Alaskan cedars. Those trees are gonna get about 15 to 20, 25 feet tall, maybe. I've never seen them that big, but what a cool, eerie backdrop. Later, we're gonna get those things all lit up, and as they mature, this is just gonna turn into this very whimsical entrance. So this is the eye catcher, and as we come into here, we can't help but hear out of our left ears, what an awesome, unbelievable Babbley Brook stream. Pazinski, way to go bud, you pushed me to do this. I really didn't think we had the time to do it, but we did it, and the whole thing looks amazing. I told Jack, I was like, we could do this if we build the whole thing out of nine rocks. Coincidentally, it's like nine rocks and a stump. <laughs> a pretty awesome piece of driftwood. This thing, as it matures, is gonna look better and better and better. I call it my bird-loving stream, and the reason it's gonna be bird-loving is a couple spots. So one of the reasons I really wanted to create a bird-loving stream was because a couple years ago, I realized just in my own backyard, watching all all the different birds come in. How soothing and relaxing watching the birds interact with the pond is. It's a lot like watching the fish in a pond. So if you don't have the space to do a big pond and you want to have the relaxation of a pond with the fish and everything else, do a pondless waterfall because the birds that come and that are attracted to a pondless waterfall are insane. And they're kind of funny as the birds come in and, and compete for the food and play around with each other and get a drink and then go back over here and dart back and forth. It's really relaxing and fun. Get birds invited in your backyard. It's awesome. As we move this way, you can actually see off to my left the really cool, nice, new, clean patio over here. The new Copthorn patio that Jeff from Premier and his guys did, and it looks stunning. It's such an inviting walkway that just pulls you over the, this way. This space here was intentionally designed to put a bench. I just got to find the right bench. I don't want to put just any bench. I want something really cool, maybe something in the center with a couple big planters on either side. An area where I can really stop and look at an older feature that we had in here that Chris put in last year and it looks so good there was no reason to take it out so I love the spilling bowls and everything in here and as the landscape behind it matures then my favorite feature is just behind it so as we come around here we're welcome to do a whole nother vignette over here and you guys know this how much I love creating that mystery and so there's always winding pathways strategic landscape so you can't see what's behind something else and if I can't do that then I call my good buddy Tony from A-List Construction and he builds me some quick little trellises here and what I love about the trellises is how it really just makes this area its own little cozy unique space to sit in you're not focused on everything else back over there and when I come around the corner of course I see our rec pond over here and the, all the fish that are schooling around but again I can't help but then hear the sound of something else to the right oh what is that it's incredible <laughs> <laughs> it's a signature koi pond over here. So we've got a big giant rec pond, but if you can't afford $400 or $500,000 feature over there, you could do something a little bit more realistic here. I love the way this thing turned out. I love the depth right off the patio. This is gonna encourage fish to come right up next to us. We've got a fish feeding rock. I know 100% this is how I'm gonna be feeding fish. Sitting on the seat wall, my foot on the rock. We've got a fire bowl right next to me. I mean, are you kidding? Like what else could we add? I'll tell you a whole weeping wall on the back side over there that weeping wall grabbed everybody's attention you've got the intake bay back over in there and then a really cool you remember it i said over and over i just want a simple waterfall so just a simple tall drop back there with kind of a twisting turning little stream as it enters back into the pond and our wetland filter is all in that spot right there i cannot wait to see how this thing matures and the landscape looks incredible the whole place is just stunning 
up the six foot stack slate wall back behind there. You're like, it's so cool. And you have no idea that eventually on the back side of that is gonna be what will be my next favorite space in the entire aqua garden. That thing's gonna be a big giant weeping wall into another little secret garden back in there. So it just goes on and on and on here. You guys have to, have to, have to, have to make it a bucket list. No different than the pyramids or the Great Wall of China. Come to the aqua gardens because this place is unreal. enough. People are coming. I actually see people lined up over there. People are wanting to come in here. I've got a VIP event that I've got to get to. I got to get out of these clothes, change into something a little different. So I got to get out of here. Follow me. So this is Spring Sale. This is about what we expect on our VIP night. VIP night, for you guys that don't know what it is, is a special invite only. These are invites for people that we built ponds for last year, people that we're building ponds for this year. As much as we would love to invite everybody because we truly think all of our customers are VIPs, we can't host a 600, 800 event person in one spot over here. So we just do customers from last year and future customers this year. They come in, they get their fish, they get their plants, we have hors d'oeuvres, we have drinks, it's so so much fun and it's great to just kind of reconnect with our past customers so you contractors out there that are thinking of a way to kind of drum up some extra business do a VIP night either do it at your house do it at your shop do it at another customer's house show off the ponds it's just so much fun to kind of reconnect with your customers on a more personal level I'm sitting, actually I'm finally sitting. I'm sitting in my favorite place in all of Aqualand, the Aqua Garden. I just love it back here, it's so cool. It's even more enjoyable to see people like this enjoying it. We've had so many people back here sitting in the lounge chairs, feeding the fish, interacting with the fish, asking unbelievable questions, and they're just scratching the surface of everything that's happened on the last couple days. And it seems like a week ago, but it was only a couple nights ago where we had our VIP night. And that VIP night is such a fun event, reconnecting with past customers, reconnecting with future customers, Customers. That's a ton of fun. Can't believe we do it because we're definitely running on fumes on Friday night and then we run into the week of spring sale and everything else. A lot of people are walking through here first before they even get into Aqualand where all the craziness was. Now I'm taking a big deep breath because it's over but it was so much fun. I love inspiring people about the Japanese hoi and showing them all the beautiful possibilities for their backyard ponds. I knew that they would love the fish that we picked out from Japan and I love seeing some of the ones I remember picking out from Japan and knowing that this customer would probably buy this fish. So that was really cool. And then people are coming and getting their filter mats and their water treatments, picking up ideas. It's so much fun. It was exhausting, but I love it. I love running on fumes. I love inspiring people, and I know everybody else does too. It's such a fun three days. Even Greg comes in back into town. You know, he flies all the way back from Utah to join us. But so it's fun. It's great to reconnect with all the employees. It's great to reconnect with all of our potential customers, all of our past customers and future customers. It's just a fun, 
really fun event and we had the best weather ever. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was so much fun. Hope you love the Aqua Gardens because I love it. Tell me your favorite part of the Aqua Gardens. Tell me what you thought of Spring Sale. Tell me if you wish you could have been here and couldn't make it. Hey, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. See you next week. Bye.